So, anyways, we are going to look at Rel and the order of things. Guys, thank you for the follows. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to look to see wh what is up on the website for Rel, and then we'll look at her abilities, probably on Skin Spotlight. Maybe check out her skin also, if there is one, and like interactions, you know, all that stuff. So, we will try to. Um, we will we will just try to see what's out there for Rel. And, uh, yeah, she's like right up here, right on the front page. First of all, let's just talk about her splash art. It does look very epic. It looks very different from all of the Disney looking stuff that's been coming out recently. So for those of you who are not into that kind of stuff, this is for you, okay? I feel like her release has seen a lot more positive feedback than a lot of the other ones just because of i guess she she is a lot less weeby is that what i, I should call her i don't know not that weeby stuff is bad but i think there was a little bit too much of it recently and so this is kind of a kind of a kind of a return to the roots of league of legends in a way but in a in a more modern not modern but in a more like 2020, you know, way. The Iron Maiden Rel, the product of brutal experimentation at the hands of the Black Rose. Rel is a defiant living weapon determined to topple Noxus. Ooh, so... What is her region? She is from Noxus, but she is against Noxus. Okay, cool hair. Doesn't look like she does much to it. If she does, it looks very natural, okay? Forge your heart into something strong, unbreakable, Rel. All right. She's already related to Samira. I do, I do think she looks a little bit like Samira. There is, like, their armor looks kind of similar with the steel plating here, like a vest, sort of. And the horse, the horse, the horse, it's, is it, a, is it an actual horse? Or is it like technology? Let's see. We're gonna read our biography now. Posters across Noxus warn of a dangerous criminal. Armed with a massive, blunted spear and born atop a magical fiend whose mere existence poses a threat to the safety and security of the entire nation. Okay, very epic beginning. Even some within the steeled ranks of the Trifarian Legion have begun to worry that they will be sent after her to their utmost to their almost certain deaths. What kind of monster could be behind such heinous unchecked destruction? The simple answer is a sixteen year old girl. Whoa sixteen? Sixteen. Sixteen. Actually now that I'm looking, she could be sixteen. But okay, I, I it's gonna take me some time to process. Sixteen, wow. The complicated one is unforgivable. Rel was special from the moment of her birth and fated to suffer for it. Born the daughter of a Noxian foot foot soldier and the heir to a fallen noble house. She enjoyed neither the trappings of wealth nor the gilded upbringing common to children of the lower aristocracy. Nevertheless, her parents had grand plans to mold her into someone who could shatter through Noxus's de dense political landscape. As Rel's mother always said, excellence is measured in sacrifice. Is she Asian or something? Is she Asian? Her parents Asian? Rel's unhappiness grew with time, sparking something unique within her. A magic unlike anything seen in centuries. The ability to manipulate metal. She's a metal bender, guys. She's a metal bender. To Rel's parents, this was something to be exploited. Okay, her parents sound a little bit... Just a little bit psychotic. Just a tiny bit. But maybe they're living their dreams through her, which is what a, a lot of parents do, right? For Rel's own sake, of course. And they tried unsuccessfully to apprentice her with many powerful mages who might whisk their daughter into the political or military elite. But someone else took notice of the young girl's magic. Seeing in Rel a weapon who could one day face Noxus's most hated ancient foe, a certain pale woman visited the family with a dark bargain. Rel soon found herself the star pupil of a very special academy, hidden far from the capital and away from the council's prying eyes. And though they rarely made appearances in her new boarding school, her mother and father never seemed more proud or more hopeful of their daughter's future. It seemed, at least for a moment, that perhaps Rel would be loved after all. Then the true horrors began. Okay, now the dark story starts. 
Rel was first forced into combat with another student when she was eight, and afterward, a kind of magic sigil was painfully grafted into her arm, amplifying her power so that she could become even stronger. Yet while this had been framed as a training exercise, Rel never saw the boy again. She never saw any of her opponents again. That's a yikes. Every day, she grew more powerful, honing her magic for martial art for martial combat. Her body became covered with sigils that amplified her magic abilities to impossible heights. In time, she could rip a vein of raw ore from deep out of the ground, twist the walls into deadly weapons, and superheat an opponent's armor until it collapsed and crushed them. Oh, but her instructors desired even more from her. <laughs> Take all the metal bending aside, and it sounds like South Korea, Seoul, the city of Seoul, anybody? All in the hopes that Rel would be the most powerful soldier the Empire had ever known. On her 16th birthday, after a particularly barbaric duel, she'd finally had enough. Casting her instructors aside, Rel tore past the guards and ripped open the doors of a forbidden wing of the academy, discovering the true nature of her school. Every opponent she defeated had been nullified, their magic forcibly extracted from them and placed into the very sigils covering Rel's body, and left as emotionless puppets devoid of memories. Oh no, this was the price of her power, and she could never give it back. Worst of all was the headmistress who oversaw the procedures herself, Rel's own mother. All of this had been for Rel, she said. After all, excellence is measured in sacrifice. Rel raged to the small handful of faculty who survived her escape from the academy. It was like the earth had been torn open into a twisting whirlwind of razor-sharp slag. There was a lot of drama going on in this biography, just saying. The building ripped itself apart, forming an impenetrable suit of black armor around Rel as she crushed those who stood before her, flattening seasoned soldiers with a lance heavier than a mountain. Bursting through the front gate on a steed made of rippling iron, she led as many of her classmates as she could to freedom, leaving the rose scrambling to recover the null and erase any trace of what their organization had done. But it was far too late. Soon enough, the surviving faculty members began to die in increasingly public ways, and the Null could no longer be kept secret. Rel is now a threat to Noxus, but not in the way the handbills proclaim. She is a self-styled defender of the meek, full of unchecked fury, distrustful of everyone, and merciless toward a government that turned a blind eye to years of suffering and abuse. Not because the Empire was personally responsible, but because they stood by and did nothing. Riding atop her iron steed, Rao's eyes are set on nothing less than the complete destruction of Noxus and saving any children who, like her, survived the Black Rose Academy. And there is nothing in this world that can stop her. Da -da 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 what can I say? Actually, pretty interesting biography. I like it a lot more than, um, what's her face? Uh, Seraphine? Seraphine's biography? Not Samira. What was the one before her? Lilia? Lilia's bio? Yeah, I feel like this one is... It packs more into her character, I think. Yes, she is a rebel. It reflects, I guess, in her look. And also she has a pretty unique ability. And I guess also furthers something about... Something of the lore behind Noxus. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Skin Spotlight. How about we do that? So this was one day ago. And let's uh, take a look, shall we? But how can she rip ore out of the ground with her hands? <laughs> she just can. Okay. Passive. Break the mold. Rel attacks very slowly, but temporarily steals a portion of her target's armor and magic resist to deal bonus damage based on the amount stolen. Additionally, Rel can siphon her resistances from multiple different foes to grow extremely tanky. So she anti-tanks and grows tankier. But her attacks, her basic attacks are very slow. She looks pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Okay, Q. Can we can we see it again? Uh-huh. Rel stabs forward with her lance, breaking any shields and damaging all enemies hit. Damage decreases after the first target. If Rel has an ally bound with E, attract and repel. Okay, we're gonna have to look at E. She and that ally recover health for each champion hit by this ability. W one. Okay, she dismounts. Who 
Ooh, look at that. Hold on. Look at this hitbox. It kind of looks like science hitbox a little bit, but like wider. Interesting shape. Can only cast while mounted. Rel leaps into the sky and transforms her mount into heavy armor, getting a huge shield that lasts until destroyed or remounting. Upon landing, she knocks up all enemies around her. Okay, so this is a knockup. Rel can cast E, attract and repel, and R, Magnus Storm, during the transformation. Rel has increased durability, low movement speed, and a movement speed cat while in armored form. After the transformation, disability changes. Okay. So, you do this, you dismount, you walk around really awkward like that. <laughs> and then you can mount back up, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, just like that. Rel rushes forward and transforms her arm into a mount, gaining a burst of movement speed during her next attack. She charges her target uh, to deal bonus damage and flip them over her shoulder. Rel has increased movement speed while mounted. After transformation, this ability changes to Ferromancy Crash Down. Attract and Repel. Oh. It's kind of like the moving Irelia stun. Or the Tarek thingy. Rel magnetically binds a piece of her armor to a target ally champion, granting them bonus armor and magic resist while nearby. Rel can recast the spell to break the bind and stun all enemies around and between her and her bound ally. And the ult. Oh, what? Rel erupts in magnetic fury, yanking nearby enemies toward her. She then creates a gravitational field around her, pulling nearby enemies in for a few seconds. The field doesn't interrupt her enemies' other actions. Ah, uh, okay, hold on a sec. So they're not... It's not like a Skarner ult, right? Sort of like Skarner's ult, but they can do things, right? What if you have a dash? Can you dash out of her ult? I'm assuming you can, right? Because you're not getting interrupted from doing that. So like against an Ezreal, that's probably not really going to work if he has his dash up, right? Right? And this is the Battle Queen Rel. This is the skin for her that they made. She, now that I hear her voice, excuse me, can we make this higher quality? Now that I hear her, she does sound a little bit like a teen. <laughs> this sucks. I don't have time for this. Okay. <laughs> she does a little sticking of her tongue out at the end. <laughs> That's pretty cute. I refuse to be broken. I guess in her alt you can flash and stuff. I guess so. That's pretty cool. At least she she laughs like a kid, which is kind of like, I guess a good. More armor. It's like the good thing about that laugh. I like that laugh. Let's listen to it again. I feel like I like that laugh because even though she went through such a hard childhood, she can still like <laughs> laugh pretty genuinely. To me, that sounds like a genuine laugh. I need even more armor. Whoa, that hitbox looked different. Will. <laughs> you got a problem? Uh, 
Okay, so Q. What's her E again? Ah, the stun thingy. She needs to be uh, bound to an ally. That hair is an interesting design, yep. Kawaii Cat, hello, welcome. Yes, guess now that she's free and doing what she likes, she can laugh and enjoy it. That's true. Yeah. It's consistent with the lore. Ooh. The stun animation looks pretty. The lance does the rest. Oh, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> the alt looks pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so I'm assuming the engage would be you drop in there with your W. You knock him up, then maybe you can la manage to land a stun with the E, right? And then you Q, break the defenses, or you Q and then you stun them, and then maybe you can drag them. There's not much disengage though, because once you are dismounted, you're really slow. Oh. Okay, so I think we're just looking at the different combos now at this point. I don't know, what do you guys think? What do you think about Rel? How do you like her lore? How do you like her abilities? You need an ally to stun though, so you can't 1v1 with this champion. I guess that's one of the ways that they kind of want to ensure that she stays a support. That people don't take her to other lanes. People are still gonna do that though, right? Especially in the beginning when she comes out kind of broken. And can we just appreciate the fact that Elderwood Orn is also out? <laughs> Elderwood Orn <laughs> is gonna be out. It's Paris. Her, her lore is beautiful, honestly. Also, as support main, I'm really excited and I'm on my way to main her when she comes out. She sounds really fun. I also want to try her out because I do play support as well. So I think it will be I think it'll be a fun experience trying her out. But um, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna try her out today, because she is on the PBE, right? She is, I think. Once she is, I think it's patch 10.25, right? Then she's gonna be on the live servers and then we can try her out, I think.